Sorry, just never loved rain so much before. Anyway, today we have an awesome build courtesy of my friends at KeyboardGenius.com and this is the Vern by Zambimon. Really simple packaging with a good amount of foam and just the keyboard, but it does its job. The case comes assembled, and really the only other thing in the package is the PCB, which is inside the case, so we gotta take it apart to get it, and it's held together by a bunch of hex cap screws. So yeah, the PCB just sits nicely inside, sandwiched by two pieces of bubble wrap. Not the most beautiful packaging, but everything came perfectly fine, so I can't fault it. The plate is also held by the exact same screws, so that's cool, you can't mix them up. And as we can see, the plate is screwed to the top aluminium piece, meaning that we have a top mount design. This, in theory, provides a more consistent and even feel, as well as sound, as the mounting points are not scattered underneath the PCB. Here's the top aluminium piece. Good chunk of alu with pretty thick walls, actually. There's a bit of cosmetic damage, but it is on the inside and somewhat common to see, so it's all good. There's also some long protrusions to help with positioning, but it's not a gasket mount board or anything, so it'll screw together just fine anyway. Here's the bottom aluminium piece. We have the recesses for those protrusions on the top piece, and the finish on this piece is pretty much perfect. There's hardly anything milled out on the inside, being nearly just a flat surface, because the top piece takes up most of the space. The USB-C extension PCB sits even lower, which is a feature of the board. Wilbur's done this on a bunch of boards, and it really just gives the keyboard designer much more flexibility on where to put the port, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. The plate is made from brass and has a nice sandblasted finish that many customs seem to be going with these days. It has that extra little bit of weight because it is brass, and the finish on most of these sandblasted plates I've seen have all been really good, and this is no exception. And we can also tell that it has a completely fixed layer. Here's the WTATA Vern PCB designed by Wilbur. Beautiful PCB from him as you'd expect. There are two layouts of the board available, being the modern and the classic. So the PCB itself doesn't have a crazy bottom row or other options for the other keys. It supports MX style key switches and through hole LEDs if you want some backlighting, but we won't be installing any. For the stabs, we decided to try out the C3 stabilizers for ourselves. Comes in a nice box, which is a first, probably not necessary, but it's nice. I picked them up from a friend, and there were two packs in this box, which I didn't know, but each pack comes with a 6.25U and 7U wire, and even an Allen key for the screws. Even the stabilizer world is a crazy one these days, with the GMK retooling a while back, making everyone look elsewhere. The Jurok stabs have been very popular, but are pretty pricey. These C3 ones are nearly like half the price, but so far the general consensus hasn't been the most positive, but yeah, as said, we'll see for ourselves. I did the usual band-aid mod with fabric band-aids to soften the bottom out, and looped them with dielectric grease. The wires do clip in pretty solidly, and one of the issues with the Jorik stabs have been that the wires do have the potential to pop out. Normally I don't record this, but I let it run this time, and it took me nearly like 20 minutes just for the stabs. Always a pain fiddling with the tiny screws and washers. Oh, and uh, these are pretty cool because they're available in a bunch of colours. The switches we have for this build are alpacas that we got from Prime Keyboards and are a Duroc linear switch. So many switches coming out from different manufacturers as well, and right now Duroc linears are known to be pretty smooth and they do feel really great in stock form, but I also lube them with Christo MCG 111. And this was seriously just super easy to solder. It has a completely 100% fixed layout, so you cannot go wrong with switch placements at all, and the switches weren't overly difficult to put in, even though they are also 5-pin. One thing I did notice just watching the video back, the stabilizer cutouts are very precise because of this, so there's not much space around them, so if your stabilizer wire does pop out, it does kind of look tough to be able to pop them back in with something thin. Didn't happen to me, but
Being a very simplistic and clean design, it's so straightforward to put back together as it was to take apart. No gaskets, no fine aligning of any sorts, there's no extra weight for the bottom, all we gotta do is screw the plate to the top piece and then plug in the USB-C extension and screw the whole thing together. So easy and really enjoyable actually, in I guess a weird kind of way, I just appreciate the simplicity. They called the blue version Nautilus Blue, so it would go well with those keycaps, which Zenbun 1 of course designed. But this absolutely calls for GMK Striker, which he also did. Very blue, very nice. I love singular colour boards like this. I did it with my Singer V3 and GMK Hamon, which was an all red build, and this is basically the opposite of that. The blue anodization on the top piece looks fantastic. It's very even, the blue colour looks stunning in my opinion, and it feels awesome. Although the bottom piece doesn't fare as well as the top, so the colours aren't perfectly matched, which is fine to be honest, and it's a lot to expect perfection. I know that it is very difficult to get a perfect match with all the variables, but the colours are close enough and it looks great. But disregarding that, the finish isn't as nice as the top, so on the sides we can see faint lines running through horizontally. There's also really small dents around the bottom piece that you can only really see up close and in proper lighting, but honestly nothing to go crazy about, and the finish overall is sweet, and blue is such a striking colour. From the top down view, it's a simple TKL with sizable bezels, with the forehead being a little bit taller, and it features quite big fillets, giving it a really soft and rounded look, but it's not as rounded as like the Fox Orange boards. Looking at the side profile, and I've been told it has a 6 degree incline, I honestly thought it was less, and it also did look quite thin to me, but that's just the curved edges making it look so, just takes away the blockiness. And it has that classic cut towards the back, but again with them curves. An interesting thing that I noticed with this board is that you can tip it if you push firmly towards the top. Had no effect whatsoever in actual use, but I'm not sure if I've experienced this with other mechs, and it is sturdy on the desk. It's also a really easy keyboard to pick up and move around, which has become something that I've come to appreciate more and more over time. It's not an overly heavy keyboard, coming in at around 2.18 kilograms, but still has that nice heft. On the rear we have that nice curved butt, which slims down the back, and hiding here is the USB-C port. I did read this on the product page, and honestly haven't paid much attention to this on other boards, so the USB-C extension allows the port to sit much lower than if it were on the PCB itself, therefore the cable can sit much closer to the table which I personally find really cool. I don't use coiled cables so that's a different story, but normally with straight cables it kind of floats in the air and goes down onto the table, so not parallel. Also cast shadows in video and photos. This however, looks much cleaner in my opinion. We chucked in our packers which are a Duroc linear with 62 grams. In stock form, they already feel quite smooth, perhaps because they're still fresh moulds and all, but you can't really go wrong with lubing to get that extra buttery feeling and to improve acoustics, because they don't sound amazing stock.
Awesome typing experience, the switches are amazing. Personally, the smoothest board I've typed on, but that's just going off an assortment of lubed cat boards. I have been experimenting with these housings and different stems, which looks very promising, but I haven't built a full board like this. But yeah, very smooth. It's difficult to have all of them feel exactly the same with the looping as well, so there is some scratch, but some of these have hardly any friction or scratch, even off axis. Comparing to my lubes Gator on Ink Yellows, these are far beyond those, even though they're not regarded to be that sort of switch. And comparing to lubes Gator on Ink Blacks and Gat Yellows, these are again a touch smoother. It's just the sound that isn't as deep as said Gator on Ink Blacks and probably retooled MX Blacks and those kind of switches, but the lube does help a little bit with that. But the top out is quite sharp, and the wobble is absolutely fine. The board itself provides a nice and even solid typing experience, and the bottom out feels dense but not too harsh at all. The stabilizers are decent, again, they are affordable. I have no rattle in mine, which is good. They're not as smooth as Jurex stabs, but I don't think they'll have the pop out potential that those do, so for the price, I mean, no rattle is good for me. The keyboard is fully programmable via QMK and VIA, VIA being awesome and unbelievably easy to use. And that's the Vern by Zambumon. Something a little different, but at the same time simple and classy. The rounded edges on this makes the board, giving it an overall soft look, which I do like to see once in a while. This was a really easy build to put together, nothing complicated about it, and it shows and works perfectly. And I guess it's a personal thing if you like that. There's no extra flair with a weight or engraving or whatever, but it expresses itself beautifully with the color and shape in my opinion. I do really appreciate its weight though, it's still heavy but light enough to be moved around easily. And well, I am a sucker for 10 killer sports as well, just a traditional classic look. And thanks again to KeyboardTrias.com for letting me build this board, I'll chuck their link in the description if you want to check it out.